Hey, welcome to Broken World Entertainment. And I don't know if you've seen this or know about this, but Zack Snyder, yes, Justice League and uh, Rebel Moons, Zack Snyder did an interview with Joe Rogan. Yeah, he actually went on to Joe Rogan. And I'm pretty sure he didn't start it off by saying in no way is he associated with Joe Rogan. Shout out to Geeks and Gamers for that one. He basically went on to talk about his career and stuff but he gave a response which people are kind of going is he serious and it's regarding why his version of batman kills because as we all know the one rule batman has is he doesn't kill and the issue with his response not just does it sound childish but it also shows his lack of understanding of the characters as a whole. Now we know there wasn't as much backlash to Batman in his movies killing. People were like, "Yo, oh, you definitely killed that person in that warehouse scene. They took more offense to him branding people. The one character he screwed around with that people absolutely hated the one decision was of course superman killing zod but we'll have a look and i'll show you the clip as well after you we read a little bit of this to show you why he made the decision that this version of batman would kill so let's have a look at a little bit of the conversation first that him and rogan had and it says, a little over an hour into their conversation, Rogan said to Snyder, It's interesting to see when there's such a strong reaction to certain things, and especially amongst, like, really wild hardcore fans. You also face it because you cover these genres. You cover these subjects that are iconic. Superman, Batman, just those alone. Snyder responded to this by saying, by the way, that's a lifestyle choice for a lot of people. It's not a movie. It's not a movie. It's like if I made a romantic comedy, you'd be like, okay, that was fun. The people who love, and by the way, I love that they feel this passionately. I'm not in no way would I criticize that because I feel I lived the same life because for me, it's morning, noon and night. But, so for those guys, it's not just a movie, and so you have to, on some, on some level, he says it twice for some reason, uh, you have to acknowledge that this is their religion, and they feel strongly about it. Now, it's really interesting that he's defending it, this is the weird thing as well, like he defends it and then kind of craps on it as well, it's weird. Especially when we get to what he says for his reasoning for Batman killing. So you hear there, he's like, he loves that the fans are passionate. You know, because let's face it, we wouldn't have gotten the Snyder Cut if it wasn't for the fans campaigning for that movie to be released. Which forced Warner Brothers hands basically into allowing him to finish it and release it. And we got a great movie i know there's people who don't like it, but it was it was great then he's kind of saying it's their religion you know they're so passionate about it it's like religion for them weird statement but okay but then this is what he says for why he made batman kill in his movies have a look at this like people are always like well batman i batman can't kill Right. So Batman can't kill is canon. And I'm like, OK, well, the first thing I want to do when you say that <laughs> <laughs> is I want to see what happens. And they go like, well, don't put him in a situation where he has to kill someone. I'm like, mm. well, that's just like you're protecting your God in a weird way. Right. right. You're making your God irrelevant if he can't be in that situation. Now, it's not not an incredibly strange thing to say. It's <laughs> not just did he do it because they told him he can't, which that's where the childish part comes in. But then he's like, oh, it's like they're trying to protect our God for some reason. Y you've just spoken about how a lot of people f 
feel like this is their religion. You know, that's a stupid statement anyway. No one's looking at it as like they're going to live, die and read for these things. But to say you love that they're that passionate and stuff about it, those characters and those stories that you acknowledge that they love it that much and that it's like a religion to them but then you turn around and say but they tell me I can't do it so screw your religion screw your feelings screw your canon I want to see Batman kill <laughs> it's, it's so bizarre and he basically did it simply because the studio told him you realise Batman doesn't kill don't you and as soon as they say it, he's like, I'm having Batman kill. It's, it's like, are you, it's like he's trying to be edgy and dark and stuff, but it just comes off as childish. You know, there was always that kid in school who just thought he was great. You know, he was just like, give lip to the teacher all the time. You're, you'd say stupid things to other people in the cat, and you'd be looking at that idiot going like, he thinks he's cool. He thinks he's like the big man in the room. You're actually the dumbest son, son of a bitch we've ever seen. Sit down and shut up. And it, it's like he's that. How to start with was he brought on to take control of Batman and have to be told what the character is. Now we know he was doing Superman. It was Man of Steel. And look, everyone says oh, he made a mistake doing BVS next he was forced into doing BVS next he wanted to do Man of Steel next and Warner Brothers were the ones that went no put Batman in the movie as well we want it to be Batman and Superman so once that's in there you think he would understand the character of Batman and clearly he doesn't because it's like I want him to kill it's why it had to be said to him you know he doesn't kill right that's his one rule but he's gone out of his way to kind of shit on the fans a small bit there by saying oh you know you're, you're so entitled and so attached to canon you know it has to change no it doesn't have to change but you can add to it you can build on it you can expand the character you don't have to completely deconstruct and destroy these characters for these characters to grow and change makes no sense and again to say he loves that they're that passionate but then to say you can't stick to these things that has to change it's, where does that make sense and then of course he's going on then talks about Rebel. do you realize people apparently the extended uncut version of rebel moon apparently is six hours long yeah you heard that correctly six hours long god help us all but there you go that apparently is why james gunn or james gunn you hear me jesus <laughs> that's why Zack snyder had batman kill and yes we've known he's killed in other movies we you know it's just it's never been the kind of straight up gun violence or anything you know in 89 batman he of course throws the guy down the the shaft the like church tower um after he hits him off the bell he, he's killed a few other people in uh the dark knight he kills harvey dent it, like he grabs harvey and falls off the building he led that fall led to harvey's death batman caused that but again it's not kind of what we see in this where he's brutally going out and picking up guns and shooting them and stuff yes it's a very different world it's not the batman from 89 it's not batman from nolan's world but that one rule is what defines batman as well it stops him going down to the full level of the criminals that's the point of that one rule it's not there because it's just, oh, he just doesn't want to get. No. It's what defines him from the criminals. The criminals will stop at nothing. So they will kill 
left, right, just to even get away from someone. Batman won't go across that line. And the fact, again, that a director who's working in the comic movies had to be told that and still went against it, very strange. But there you go, that's why apparently James Gunn has Batman kill. It was simply because he was told he can't. Wow. <laughs> anyway, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And with that, I'll leave it there for this one. So cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.